Welcome to William Steele, True Crime and Steel of Spotlight Television. This is William Steele, my co-host, Ignacio Esteban. What's up, Bill? What's going on, man? Right. An another week, an a lot of crazy events. Every week there's something. That's why this show is so great, folks. you got to watch it week in and week out because we give you what's going on, and we tell you exactly the facts. No spin here. This is a no spin zone for sure. Yeah, definitely. I, I am so busy. I'm still in South Florida, and we are in the middle of a million different things. I had a great meeting yesterday with Dave Icabetti. He wrote the book Fat Dave. His father was Gambino captain. We did a phenomenal interview with him awesome. and uh, exchanged some pictures and books. And, you know, his book was uh, the basis for the movie Silent Partners. Yes. Um, and we're going to be rolling into filming another movie. And I have so many interviews lined up down here. Um it's just been a really good time of running around and getting things done. I'd like to be back in the action. Um, we love, you know, Fort Wayne. Uh, we love Indiana. The people are very nice. But yes. it's just not that same energy, you know, that, that, that I'm used to, like South Florida or New York. South Florida's a different, different animal. That's for sure, Bill. Yeah, I have so many things coming up. We have an event on the 22nd. I have a, another one um, that I'm invited to. So two of them as a celebrity guest. Uh, and no, oh, actually now a third. I'll give a shout out to to a rapper. If you if you guys remember uh, Vanilla Ice, you know the white rapper. Yeah, I remember Vanilla. Sure, sure, sure. Everybody likes that. You know the, what those Ice people. Ice Baby. Right? Yeah. So shout out to him. So we hooked up. Well, I did. I met him. He's a fan of my show, and um, I was looking for venues to shoot in in in, a, in uh, downtown by Palm Beach, uh, West Palm Beach, and Clemente Street. And yeah. there's a club. Cl there's a beautiful club called uh, Camelot. Very tasteful. Oh yeah got a nautical theme uh it's got the kennedys everywhere their yachts pictures of their yachts black and white photos of the kennedys like very, the Cam camelot. very camelot yeah very tasteful place and so there's a rapper that works there and he's a fan of my show and he said and then we, we started talking the whole night and he's doing his, his first big headliner event and this guy's name his stage name is palm bleach <laughs> palm. <laughs> that's funny i like that and so I designed a logo for him on a bleach bottle with palm trees in the back, and it says <laughs> palm bleach on it. And so I'm on his flyer. I'm going to be celebrity guest over there at Camelot. And uh, a lot of Excellent good things like this. A lot of good collaborations are happening, book signings. A lot, of, a lot of good things, man. Like I said, I, I grew up in Miami, you know, born in Los Angeles, L.A., raised South Florida, Miami, Kendall area. Uh, went to school out there. Did a lot of cases when I came back also. So I saw the good, the bad and and the ugly and, and and south florida is a reason why it was called the magic city a lot of things happen underneath and a lot of people a lot of money unfortunately a lot of the money laundering cocaine there's, there's, there's a lot of good things and a lot of bad things that happen i i do love the culture i i love the uh, cuban american culture obviously my family came from, from from spain to cuba to the united states escaping communism i do love that side of south florida i don't miss the congestion I don't miss the high taxes. I don't miss the hurricanes, Bill. And I've been through quite a few hurricanes. Here, North Virginia, no hurricanes. Uh, only re remnants of storms that come through here, which I like. I like to see the little remnants. So the, where we're staying now, you know, we have to lock it down if a hurricane comes. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. But everybody says you're safer, like that? As you're safer almost staying <laughs> in the house than you are fleeing because if you try to leave, you know the the interstate uh, is i-95 and as you know the florida turnpike the only two ways out of here they become like parking lots yeah you have to leave early this is the key if you're gonna leave leave early if if you don't leave late and if you are gonna leave late go to a shelter go to a, a hurricane shelter and stay there but if you're in a flood zone if you're in an area where they see mandatory evacuation you're in a mobile home or you're right on the water you have to leave there's no surviving a 25 foot 30 foot Storm surge is going to wipe you out. We're, no we're, back, we're, we're not, we're, we're, I think we're in the highest point of Boca Raton. So that's good. Um, actually, the rat's street, mouth. You're in the rat's mouth, Bill. The street, the street that we're on is the highest point of Boca Raton. And I think we're about a quarter mile from the ocean, eighth of a mile from the ocean into coastal. So I don't think it'll flood in here, but I know, I, I'm not crazy about staying here after I saw what Andrew did and ripped out every concrete building and I, everything there is. I, I don't want to skate. Go, go check it. I, I'm a big guy. I've studied hurricanes because I've been through hurricanes, and that's something else. That once you, you once you live through a really intense hurricane, you, you kind of respect and you study them. And uh, look at another one here. You want to look images? Look at her. Uh, this is before Andrew, Hurricane Camilla, that wiped out the Gulf Coast and a little city 
in Mississippi and people that, that want to stay, it was like a hurricane party, right? In a building, you show the images of the building. And then afterwards, you know what's left of that building? Just one little slab was left of that building. They're, they're all dead. They're all dead. dead. And I think one person was found uh, 12 miles down in a tree. Yeah, I, I told uh, people that asked us to stay here. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. You can't, you can't, I saw, you can't, I, I, if we're looking at a four or five, I, there's no way in hell I'm staying here. You can't. You, especially <laughs> if it's coming right towards Boca and you're a, a less than an eighth of a mile on the water, you have to evacuate because guess what happened? That storm surge is going to wipe you out. Remember, the thing you have to fear the most is water. Wind, you can survive it somewhat. But the water, when it's look at the homes out of uh, what happened in Katrina, right? Or, or think just look at all the footage. You cannot survive that. You'll be one of those people on top of the roof where the water's all the way up, and you'll be hoping they come and rescue you. You, you, have, you make sure you have your hammer to make the hole in the attic to go through there. Because that's how people escaped. They would have drowned their own homes and all that. It's unbelievable yeah. images. And and here, you know, we're taking care of plants and everything too. So they have to, some have to come in and out on different days. I did it. Uh, yesterday morning, the plants and there's always these insects, these biting insects, right? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. and whatever, whatever it was, they get your legs pretty good, and you end up itchy for days. Something bit me here, and then right on my eyelid. I don't know if you can see the swelling. I do. I just say, you, you don't recommend for that, Bill. Uh, uh, we had uh, the the lamps, the mosquito lamps everywhere. You gotta have keep them outside. Mosquito lamps and spray a lot, and have the certain candles that mosquitoes hate. That helps a lot also. You, you got to have that all yeah, over. Yeah, there's like citronella things that burn. You got to use everything. That. You got to use all that stuff. That's what they use when they were here, but I don't know where any of that stuff is. So we're kind of on our own. I'll, I'll, I'll be texting I'll be texting Gary and say, bro, I need it ASAP. I'm, I'm getting eaten alive over here. I'm getting, mosquitoes are bad in South Florida. Yes. They, or here's another option for you. Call mosquito control. They come out and they'll spray the neighborhood also. Yeah, this problem is Gary and his wife are very much against these the insecticides. <laughs> so they have a the, one of the biggest properties here, and uh, if it was me, they you know I'd be having an exterminator out here once every two months or something. Yeah, but, you need to you need to spray 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 those things, or at least get, get the candles out yourself and, and and just put the things out outside. That way, at least you can enjoy the backyard because without it. Man, it's, it's not fun. Or jump in the pool. You gotta live, stay on the water. <laughs> I can't go out in the backyard here. You get eaten alive. It's just it's a, it's a massive yard, it's like the size of a football field almost. You can't really enjoy it because you get eaten alive. So. Yeah. Well, anyway, it's, but it's a yeah, blessing. Man. It's a blessing to be here. It's a beautiful place. But I, I know when it's time for me to go out, we get in the car, we go somewhere, or we go to the ocean. It's right here. I mean, I can walk to the ocean pretty much. But yeah. um, all right, so let's roll into the show. We've had a horrific. A school shooting. I know you did a book uh, about school shootings. It, it's and, and I I've written a book about the mo the worst mass shootings in U.S. history and how it stopped them happening again. I did an article, two of them. Remember, we just had the anniversary of the McDonald shooting right in San Ysidro, California. Forty years uh, this summer in July. Forty years. Lessons learned. This one, it seems like they got ahead of it. They learned some of the lessons, the mistakes. Didn't ha wasn't out another Uvalde. It it, it, it wasn't another uh, Columbine where police stayed outside, they, they were notified. What I liked about it, and, and, and those who don't know, this is in Winder, Georgia, at high school. I think it's, it's called Appalachian High School. And uh, the 14-year-old student was in algebra class. And my thing is, they have to start checking the backpacks and bags of kids coming in. Because if you can if you can bring into your classroom, keep it in the locker, or wherever he kept it, an AR-15 style rifle they stole from, or took from his dad, or allegedly, or whoever, that, that's a problem you bring in the schools. Almost like you have to get into he a position where you can check AR them school. out. He got an AR-15 into his classroom. He had a, he had, yeah, yeah. I've never handled one. Do they come apart in pieces where you could make them smaller? I, I don't know if he had it up. If he had it, maybe he took it apart a little bit and put it together. He might have done that, which is fine. He, he, you can take it apart. Obviously, you can clean it. You can put it together. But my, my thing is, I mean, they, they have to do a better job, I think, in schools, especially in massive high schools. You have to search – and start looking at stuff coming in because you can have like a you know, a bag for whatever PE and it's pretty big and you can put it in there and break it apart and bring it in. That that's that's a problem. What I liked about the school and listen to the witnesses report a girl who was in the same classroom with him and his name is what has been reported out there as uh, Colt Cray uh, Gray. He went he went to uh, I guess he was known to have some issues. I guess police had talked to him last year, allegedly making threats 
posing with weapons, all that stuff. That's red flags for, hey, this could be a problem. They talked to the father also, uh, you know, and they, he denied it, whatever. Unfortunately, now four people are dead, two students and two teachers. Awful. You see their, their pictures and everything else out there. Could have been a lot worse, but the, the uh, resource officer acted quickly. Good. Unlike Parkland, the resource officer, he's still alive, acted quickly, and police made very quickly. The doors automatically locked. So when he went to leave his classroom in algebra to go whatever he's going to do, the, the student who interviewed said, no, that's very typical. He likes to skip class, whatever. The door locks automatically. So he was banging on the door. And when the student's about to open the door, looks to the window, she sees him with a rifle and freaks out and doesn't open the door, which good. was a good move. That that saved their lives. That saved their lives. He just goes to another classroom and he kills other people there. But that that move saved their lives. That door automatically locked. Did they have, did they come up with a motive for him yet? I mean, there's no excuse, but it was there a motive? Behind motive is, is, is typical with these guys, and a lot of it is mental health issues, anger issues. Uh, depression. It, it uh, all. It's the same wow. mo over and over. Uh, look at this guy Crooks, right? Matthew Tim, uh, Matthew Crooks, right? What his his motive? He, he was also a loner. He, he didn't fit in. He, they said he was quiet by himself. A kind of a typical loner type, right? Because people who are happy, they, they don't kill their classmates. I think. Do that. I think uh, a lot of a lot of it stems from people being bullied and they're having a bad home life. Or they might be awkward, and then they get bullied at school. And the school doesn't do a damn thing about it, um, and they snap too. I think bullying is left behind a lot of these things. They, they snap, or, or something else happens, but or or he, he's just an angry person and decides to take it out on his classmates, which is, which is awful, which is the awful thing to do. And, and the way you do it, it like I said, it could have been a lot worse. Uh, at least, I mean, four is bad, but that's how you contain mass shootings, Bill. You have to have quick response, movement from the resource officer there. Right. The doors. I like that. They had lockdown locks down. They can't get in anywhere. And you address the guy immediately instead of waiting outside, like in Parkland. Right. Where they didn't go in there. And he's killing the students and the teachers inside while the armed officers are outside now willing to deal with a guy. Even though he has a rifle, you have a handgun. At least you have something. Those students, and teachers had nothing. Right. Or even worse, Bill, the one that takes the cake of all Texas. We've talked about before on the shows, Rob Elementary. 77 minutes and by the time they had to wait whoever you know who rescued who eventually took care of that shooter was, was the board tac team from from what used to be called board patrol cbp came miles away and i said no we're not waiting anymore we came in here after seeing the parents being tased being arrested outside they themselves the parents knew the kids were being killed and they're trying to go in there and save their children while the police sat outside and arrested them and did I mean, that is just the worst situation you've ever seen at least this is something where the um, the uh, the resource officer acted. acted. I, I don't want to mention the guy's name in Parkland, but it's it's all over there. I mentioned it before. You can look that one up out there at the high school. It's just awful. Yeah. So you know, for any audience that's joining us, that's new. You know, Ignacio is a retired ATF agent, so he knows what he's talking about with these active shooters. He's seen some horrific things. He's the author of the book yeah. ATF Undercover. So I would ask everybody to check out his book. He's got uh, over 80 books out now and writes articles on medium. 60. 60, 60 articles out so far. 60 <laughs> articles and counting, Bill, on medium. And I've been on this for maybe five, six weeks now, maybe that much, maybe a little less. Uh, it, it is great, great publishing platform. If you love to write. Bill, how many do you have now? You have two, right? I have two, but is it, I'm glitching with this thing because my technology <laughs> challenged. I can't find my first article I put up, and it was doing so well. Yeah, that's, well, you know, at least uh, you got another one out there too, which is good. And try, I'm trying to also build. So please follow me if you if you like what we're saying. Check me out if you're uh, uh, if if you want to if you have a medium, put my name in there, Ignacio Esteban. You'll see my 60 articles, and it's all about I have true crime, current events, politics, my life. It, it's just a lot of different subjects. I talk about a lot of this mass shooting, active shooting. This was, I hate to say, it, it, it's somewhat. I'm, I'm very pleased. What I saw here, Bill, was well, the response from law enforcement with the, with, with the way they, the teachers locked down the classrooms, automatic locking the doors, which I kind of, that's very good. People coming down, that, that prevented it to be another Columbine, another Parkland numbers. Four is awful, but it could have been a lot worse. It yeah. could have been a lot, lot worse. Winder, Georgia, and Appalachia uh, High School in Winder, Georgia. Check out the videos. Check out that and look at the images 
of the, um, you know, you feel horrible for the teachers, you know, that, that gave their lives. I got in a little bit late last night. Like I said, I was with a Dave Icabetti. Um, yeah. Dave, I, I found the book now. I want to put it on the screen for him. Sure. Dave wrote this book, uh, Fat Dave, about his dad, who was a Gambino captain. Now, Dave Icabetti, the founder of Club TV, we're going to be doing a lot going forward. I, I'm the one who re-edited, re-edited this book, which he did not put the new version up yet. Oh, okay. I, I cleaned it up for him. Um, and so this movie that I'm in right here that Ciro DiPaggio put together with him um, is based loose, loosely based upon that book. There's, there's some deviation to the you know story, but it's loosely based on the true facts of that book right there. Um, and I think Ciro posted something yesterday about when it's going to start streaming, but I do believe it's very, very soon. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I get back in late, very late yesterday. I spent the whole day with Dave. And I have fans like blowing up my phone and contacting me and right. saying, Hey, if you turn the news on, are you going to cover this story? There's been another school shooting. Yeah, we're covering it. Yeah. And I put it we're, on. We're so on it. We're on it. We're, so we're, we're on this story. I've been watching this and it's, uh, like I said, better response than Uvalde, better response than Parkland, uh, better response, I think, than Virginia Tech. Uh, I like what, you know, of course, a lot better than what happened at McDonald's 40 years ago. Well, James Hubbardy went in there and caused that massacre. And a lot of people think, you know, you can look at it now. This was a hate crime. He's an Anglo guy. He goes in there and San Isidro, predominantly Mexican-American. Everybody he executes there is Mexican, Mexican-American. Horrible deaths. How the way he killed the police. 77 minutes also, Bill. 77 minutes in McDonald's, right? San Isidro, 84, just before the Olympics. You know, this is a big thing. Ronald Reagan addresses <laughs> the nation. At the time, this was the worst mass shooting in U.S. history at the time. Right. Obviously, what happened in Las Vegas would take that up there. Uh, that that will become the worst mass shooting there with over, I think, with close to 60 dead, now over 60. That guy, uh, Stephen Paddock, horrible, horrible guy, uh, big guy there. And, and the way he has said, and that's the reason why we lost the bump stocks, but now they're back again. Mm. You know, that that's one of the few things I did not like about Trump. When he pushed that to ban the bomb stock with using ATF, and now it's back in because never demon just because one bad person. This, and this is what Joe Biden is doing right now. He's demonizing AR-15 weapons. He's he's demanding said can't there, this was him yesterday. The way you speak, you haven't seen this. You guys see this horrible speech from him. Demonizing AR-15 weapons, style weapons, uh, assault weapons. Demonizing high capacity magazines. Uh, demonizing everything else that gun rights enthusiasts need to defend themselves. It's not, it's this kid, he had issues, people responded, and that's the problem. Maybe they should do more more checks. That's like, ban, that's like ban, banning cars because there's been car accidents. I mean, this is ridiculous. Let me ask you a question about these bump stocks because <clears throat> I don't have an opinion either way, but I thought people needed a special license to be able to own a fully automatic machine gun. And now I know you have your ATF classification for all that. Sure. You, you, you spit it out here in a second. So there's a there's a type of weapon that you have to pull the trigger for for each shot. Then there's the fully automatic weapons. One, that you one trigger, you pull it once, and it empties, <clears> your, <throat> empties your magazine. Right. right. So the bump stock allows the other type to be fired almost like an automatic weapon, but without the licensing. Is that, is that it, it? It's it's it helps you pull it faster. <laughs> okay, but if it if it turns a, a, a regular firearm into essentially an automatic weapon. Well, per, per definition, it, it is not because you still have to pull the trigger every time to expel a projectile. Okay, so it doesn't automatically do it. You, it, it helps you pull it faster. Okay, I, I misunderstood. The, I thought that use use the recoil to automatically trigger the trigger. But but, but you still it still has to pull it every time to expel one. It's not like a machine gun. You pull it once and you empty the clip, right? You go. I try to go. See that 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 empty a lot faster. This you so so it does it faster, but still ATF had licensed it for years as legal. You didn't need all this. Any people that were upset, just like the uh, the pistol brace, right? You know the the Biden administration trying to weaponize ATF again, and the Supreme Court had to get involved, just like the Supreme Court got involved in this case here. So you, you see those things, and you don't like what you're seeing. It's like don't overreact deal with the problem about kids mental health and access to weapons now the question is what did the family do how did he get access to it and what were those weapons 
yeah, I heard that he was scrutinized before for having th uh, threats uh, against the school, and that the mm -hmm. the uh, parents. I thought the news was saying that they are in jail for something else uh, unrelated to all this, and that, that they may be charged. With him Maybe to access to the guns. You you, you should, as, as a responsible parent, if you think your son or daughter has some issues there. You can't let your guns and firearms have access. You, you got to put them away. You got to be smart about it. I mean, to me, that, again, common sense again, or you don't care. There's, there's problems. You want to be negligent. And then your, your 13, 14, 15 year old uh, child gets access to it. You, get, you have some explaining to do. That's yeah. for sure. It's unfortunate. Our prayers go out to the victims, uh, the uh, family members, and the people that had to be exposed to this stuff, and the poor kids that are traumatized for the rest of their lives knowing that their classmates went through this. Uh, um, we're going to roll into other stories now. I will tell you this. At Silent Partners, I, I met a guy who was one of the original cast members of Beatlemania. Hmm. How is this related to shooters? When he was a kid, part of his story is he was on a Little League team with David Berkowitz. Oh, my goodness. So this guy is going to be coming Great on killer. my show. He's going to be a guest on my show telling that story. Wow. And he said, even that far back, David Berkowitz was, was no normal kid and that he's going to tell several instances of how weird he actually was even back then that there was signs that there was something off with him. He had, he'd been over to his house one time in the Bronx. They lived in the Bronx. Then they moved to Yonkers and, and uh, he invited them over. It sounded like they were about nine or 10 years old. <clears throat> David Berkowitz gives him a soda and they talk, they're friends they are on the same team or whatever. And when the kid leaves and he's walking up the street, he slips back and he, and he feels like his eyes looking at him. <laughs> and the kid, the child, David Berkowitz, serial killer, son of Sam, 44 caliber killer from the yeah. 70s, is standing at the window watching him the whole way while he's walking. And he kept getting really creeped out about it. Like, he's like, why is he walk, watching me walk? I'm that's walking. weird. Yeah, he's, that's, that's a then, sign. And then so finally he decided to stop staring back at him and he kept walking. David Berkowitz had re ran out of the apartment, caught up to him, and the grabbed him and said, what are you staring at? <laughs> yeah. He was in the kid. Why are you looking back at me all the time? Looking at you. You know, it was like, why are you looking at me? Look at me. Why are you looking at me? Well, I'm looking at you. Look at me. So, so he said, no, it was, no, it was nothing. I just, you know, felt, felt weird. He goes, and what do you say your name was again? Like, he didn't know what else to say. And he said to him, David Berkowitz. <laughs> like, like he got in his face and repeated his name. He said he forgot about it for all these years. And then he was he was in one of the most popular uh, Broadway productions ever made. He was yeah, he came back to him. He was he was playing in Ringo Starr in 1978, and mm. he saw when he got arrested because everybody was aware of the son of Sam. I was in New York in 78 when it was going on, and nobody knew who the guy was. But when he gets arrested, and they said, "What's his name?" He was watching TV, and he said, "David Berkowitz." And he nearly said, "I nearly had a heart attack." It was the same kid. They That's got awesome. his face for no reason. That 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 definitely gets uh, chills down your spine. Thinking, man, when when would he start killing? I and mean, he become a psychopath. Oh, it's, it's like Dahmer, man. Dahmer used to love to kill animals, right, and play with their bones in the basement. Fiddlesticks. He used to call them fiddlesticks. He used to do. Yeah, that's that's a trend there where you know the making of a serial killer psychopath. Now, where it's we, going we, we past. Might, this might be a good time to go over that. I'll go over two of the things. This this this. Oh, three things, and then you can clarify them as somebody who knows more than I do. There's something called the McDonald Triad, and if I'm not, I'm not, a, if I'm not mistaken, it, it includes early signs of a potential serial killer: one loner, a child who likes to victimize, torture, and abuse animals, and mm -hmm. a bedwetter when they're young. So, do you know of anything further about the McDonald Triangle or the, the early signs of a possible uh, somebody developing into being? Yeah, they're, 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 some are, are born that way, right? And some are made. I mean, some of these guys are just in abusive households too. That they are just destroyed, and and they want to take back. I mean, uh, uh, Pedro Lopez, uh, the the, uh, the the monster from the Andes, you know, he was interviewed, and he I think they say he was the most prolific serial killer of all time, but he don't he didn't use any secret weapons, Bill. You know what he used? His bare hands. He 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 strangled over three hundred some odd allegedly three hundred some odd indigenous women and children. They're small in South America. In the uh, Peru area, Ecuador area, Colombia, and some say um, he did some time in Ecuador. I think I talked about one of the shows before when he was um, convicted. But most time, even if you kill 100 people, you only get it 15 years. He got deported back to Colombia, and the Colombians said, "I don't have a 
we don't have a case on him. And he may still be alive and still killing people because it's still people uh, disappearing mysteriously. Who knows? Hopefully he's he's already passed away and moved on. But uh, he, said he, came, he, he said he came from an abusive household. Dad was very abusive. Wasn't so, there a Russian, a Russian or Ukrainian guy, serial yeah. killer? He was known for using a ball peen hammer. Yeah. I think he mostly went behind senior citizens. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the people, uh, you know, Richard Richard Ramirez, he, he said he came from a family of serial killers. You know, the night the, the night soccer himself, his cousin was, was a serial killer. He, he was a Green Beret in Vietnam. He was decorated, but then he would also kill hundreds of these small Vietnamese women, these prostitutes they would get. They would dism dismember them, kill them, take polar. He had all these pictures of them, and when he came back, he pretty much would become the environment he was living in, and that's influence he had, and drugs and everything else became the monster that he would become. And Bo, you got to read my book, Psycho Killers. I go into some details the way he killed his victims in their homes. <clears throat> when you look at it, I know you being in law enforcement and myself having been incarcerated and being a law clerk, <clears throat> I used to look at people that hurt children or people that took a life. Um, like in war is one thing, I guess in law enforcement, you know, the same category, but people that just go out of their way to do that, to hurt innocent, kill, kill innocent people, who gives you the right morally to end somebody's life, no matter what you think of them, whether they're wealthy or, you know, having struggling, go through addiction or prostitution, who the hell do you think you are to end somebody's oh. life? To, in my book, that's a precious gift of God. You, you, you don't have the right to interfere with the, the path or the journey that that person's on. You know, yeah, they, you they, just they don't. don't. They take life. They, they <laughs> take it. They, they have no consideration. They, they're not well, Bill. They're, they're off. They're not well. It's, it's heartbreaking. They're, it's aggravating. It's hurt. It's uh, infuriating. It's it's horrible. I can't. If you want that. more information, look at my book, Psycho Killers. And I also wrote an, an article on Medium about it called Psycho Killers. And I talk some of some of these. You know, I, I talk about the Dahmers. The Bundys, John Wayne Gacy, right? Yep. That's another sick guy. The way he killed the clown killer himself. How he killed these were 14, 15 year old boys, and, and he would kill them because he would get his rock, he would rape them, he'll strangle them with a tourniquet and tell them the whole time while he's strangling them, I'm killing you and you're not gonna live through this. You imagine that? Yeah, Gacy would would pretend it was a magic trick. He's gonna show him how to get out of handcuffs or something. And then he put only one guy ever got off the handcuffs with him and put it on him. Unfortunately, uh, you got to watch whatever he did. And uh, Gacy was upset. He said, listen, you were in my house. I put the cuffs on you. He was a high school wrestler. Out I wrestled him, put the handcuffs on him, and walked him out the door. And Gacy, he never reported. He never reported. And he kept on working for Gacy for months. I have numerous of your covers up here. <clears throat> I'm having trouble finding that one you were talking about. Is this is that, is that one? Uh, of that, that one talks about them. Yeah, that's a good one. The most heinous killers and murderers the world has ever seen. Look at that bloody print there, huh? There's some <laughs> sick people there. Yep. <clears throat> and then I had, <clears throat> I had the other one about Dursta. <clears throat> yeah, there's, there's a lot of good books. But I have almost 80 books on Amazon, and all of them are free for if you're a Kindle Unlimited subscriber. All my short reads are short. They're medium and long. You can check them out. I've also got a lot of good stuff on Medium also. So check it out on uh, Medium, and both my books are on Audible. ATF Undercover and the Most Dangerous Crime Syndicates of Our Time. If you like to listen, check my Audible, and I'm hoping to get another book out soon on Audible too. There, so th those those are that there too. Transitioning to a little bit of politics here, I, I oh yeah, Joe Biden won <laughs> and done. Two and a half years ago, I wrote that book, Bill, predicting he will be a one term, worse than Carter, worse than LBJ. He's one and done, he, and he's he's sour grapes. But look at the pictures that are there: Abigate, Abigate, Abigate. At least Trump is doing honoring the disastrous things that Biden was doing, right? With, with the way they were withdrawing from Afghanistan, if, you know, the, the security failed. They should have said with the Taliban, "Hey, until we get our people out, they can't keep on going." And then have them do security at the airport. What a disaster that was! The Taliban, our enemy, security at the airport. Who, whose idea is that? And if, and if the, if the Afghan security teams can't hold out the country, want to fight, then you got to hold the line. Until you get your people out, and, and 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 Kabul and everything else, at least hold the area. At least maybe make Afghanistan like Korea, North and South, and keep that area. Why is there no accountability? I understand the president seems to be above it all and can pardon yeah. himself for anything. But what about all the commanders and people that arranged for this uh, disaster ext extraction? We left American citizens behind. Never mind people that helped us. Yeah, 
American citizens were left behind. Are they still there? What, what's going on with the people? I think a lot of them have, have gotten out, but it's uh, I, you can never cooperate. You can never expect the Taliban, our enemy, for 20 some years to be able to do security for you. No, they're part of the problem. They, they end up setting uh, the car bomb, killing 13 military personnel, which is awful, awful. Abigate, Abigate. Remember Abigate? Remember the date? And, and, where, was, and where was Joe Biden? He was at the beach, right, looking ice cream at, at the in Delaware. Every time you look on Delaware, he's always passed out. He's checked out, which is good. We don't want him, but he's checked out already, and he, he's ready to go. He's angry. He's bitter, sour grapes. He's angry at Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, everybody else that forced him out, that weren't <laughs> going to support him. He can't even talk. Every time he goes in, tries to say something, it's bad news again. He, his mental faculties have gone like this already, and uh, we really realized for four years, it wasn't Kamala either. Who was behind the scenes? I don't know. Maybe it was Obama's third Third what's, uh, term. What's so destructive is that you have this this Kamala who's got no real qualifications to be where she is. Mm. People want to vote for her because she's a woman of color slash female. Yeah. How on earth are those two things a qualification to be president? She's incompetent yeah, mentally. She yeah. does not, not one of her policies have ever worked. And the best she can do now is avoid any kind of interviews. <laughs> yeah. Because she can't speak. And then she wants to copy Trump's ideas, which she in the past said we're no good and they won't support. I she, she's an ultimate flip-flopper, Bill. She's a flip-flopper. She, That's she, what she is. She's a con artist, liar. She's withheld evidence on somebody that was on death row, knowing an innocent man was going to be put to death. She deliberately withheld that from the court, even when the court told her to, to find it and, and put the evidence up you know, for the court to rule. She, she is disgusting. She, she, this is some of the policies she's flipped on. She On fracking. She in 2019, when she ran for president, right? She said, no fracking. From day one, I will sign an executive order banning fracking. Now, flipped off. Oh, I'm for fracking. Yeah, you can do fracking. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm for that. That's fine. Uh, the, the border. Until she uh, the gets in office, office, and then she'll do what the squad and these uh, other. In, first well, day in office. Idiots. Well, let me ask you, you. You've been in office. You are the incumbent. You, this administration, you are the incumbent. Well, you've been in office three and a half years. There's not a thing when I get in office. You are in office. So she can't play that game either. She owns the economy. She owns the, the border. She owns the disaster foreign policy issues. She owns it all. And, and on top of that, she's just absolutely off. She is the ultimate word salad. Just watch her talk. It's just she talks and rambles, scrambles in there. You know, I said, how many of you guys like uh, electric cars, elect these electric buses? You know, I, I went to school in a, in a bus. How many of you also went to a bus? What does a regular fuel bus have to do with an electric bus? <laughs> n n nothing at all. Yeah, uh, it's right. two different, what are you talking about? What, what you did, what's going on now, two, two different things in here. And, and and just the whole thing with the DMZ and what happened, Kim Jong-un, North Korea is our greatest ally. No, right. they're not. They're the worst ally. They're, they're an enemy. Kim Jong-un is tight with the CCP in China, and he starves his people. He, he shoots his, his little rocket man who shoots his now, rocket now, in Japan. Now, now, we all understand if somebody's speaking under pressure, there's a crowd, and you, you accidentally slip up. But then you correct yourself immediately. Yeah, hopefully you do. Correct. You don't, but if yeah. you're in politics at that level, you certainly know North Korea is the enemy. <laughs> so. you, you can't even say that. Who? who you, you, uh, that's, that's no way you can slip that up. And, and that's just North Korea. You're the DMZ. You're watching that. They, they're having weapons point at you. And why would you go out there? I don't. I don't know about any any of that. And then she messes up when she goes out there to Ukraine, uh, the whole situation. And when she's talking to different foreign leaders, it, it's it's just embarrassing. I, I just remember when uh, uh, Holtz, uh, commentator from NBC, asked her. He said, "How come you haven't been to the border? You're the border czar." He said, "Well, I've been to Europe either." Well, you're the border czar. <laughs> Well, you gotta go to Europe. You gotta go to Europe. I mean, you gotta go there. Right. I haven't been to Cancun. I mean, <laughs> what the heck? That's it's you're you're the border czar, and then she lies about it. She says she wasn't the border czar. Yes, you were the border czar. Yes, you were. And, and remember what, what Biden said, talking about flip flopper himself into uh, when he won. Not one more inch of the wall will be built. Period. Now they're changing their tune, aren't they? Right. Now they're changing their tune. All they had to do is keep Trump's policies in place, and things people were being processed on the other side, and people who needed to be here or, or <sighs> do it the right way can get in. <laughs> and, and 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 that's just one part of the piece, Bill, because you have to deal with overstays, you have to deal with sanctuary cities, you have to deal with all the underground tunnels in our country. You know how how Gaza had underground tunnels? We have them also. 
and there's quite a few coming into our country. There's a lot of things that we have to address that have to be taken care of. And we have a, a, an administration that wants all the illegals to come in. Oh, the latest one here, Nancy Pelosi in California, Newsom, that they want to give loans, interest-free loans to illegals to buy homes. <laughs> to illegals. But some, well, somebody like me who's been trying to get on his feet for the last three three years, almost three years. God forbid, I can't. I couldn't get a loan to save my life if, if I wanted do you, to. Do you think they're going to pay back these loans, Bill? <clears throat> Interest-free <laughs> loans for illegals to buy homes? What do you think they're going to be using? This, this is what's going on in California. This is bad news. And Nancy Pelosi defended that. And you know, she had the audacity. This is, uh, you have to watch this, Amar. You know, you know, Amar used to be a Democrat. Um Mike, is it Mike Maher? Bill, Bill Maher. Bill Maher oh, yeah. and HBO, right? Bill Maher yeah. used to be a hardcore Democrat. Dude, he's gone solid center. He's against the Democratic Party. He's like RFK Jr. He's leaving the Democratic Party. J just like them, they, they're, they're fed up with this socialist woke nonsense, what's going on. He asked her, you're comparing Ronald Reagan, who was talking about Ronald Reagan's last speech, was saying this was a country of immigrants, how great it was. Legal immigration. These are illegals you're helping. You want more illegals in the country, and now you give all this free money that's our money. Where does this money come from, Bill? Tax dollars. Free money from tax dollars, just like New York City with, with the debit cards, just like in Chicago and in California. And I like the way that the politicians, the Democrat politicians, lie to the people to get votes by saying, oh, Trump's against immigration. He's never said that. He's against illegal immigration. Illegal, <laughs> I mean, yes. I mean, what is wrong with you people that you just don't understand, they what understand. the man has actually said. You know what they're doing? They're you trying to make him. Leaders are lying to you routinely to get lie. votes because they think you're freaking stupid. They, they just listen to sound bites. People are just going to listen to sound bites. They don't do their homework. They don't do. The, they don't like us. Do, do our research. We're here to help you research, get the information you need to make sound decisions. It, it, it is all what they call spin. I met somebody. Spin, spin. spin. I met somebody here in Boca. Um, He's uh, very prominent with the JCC, the Jewish uh, Community Center. Yeah. And so we had a long talk and, you know, and he says, oh, yeah, he says, I'm definitely voting for Trump. And he says, me and my husband. And I says, oh, your husband. I said, interesting. I said, you know, because I'm not trying to stereotype, but generally people that, you know, in your lifestyle, you right. want to vote Republic, a, a Democrat. He goes, no more. He said, are you kidding me? He said, can I tell you how many gay people and Jewish people right now, right here in Boca, are flipping yeah. and they're and especially the older ones they are so tired of this woke this has nothing to do with the democrat party what's going on now and they're all, be, they're all going to be voting for trump he said they are leaving in droves in this very area they're leaving the democrat party the ones yeah, who have a, a clear head to think and a good heart they're gone it, it's gone too far it's gone you know it's, it's it's ultra all, all this illegal giving this stuff away all remember this is all our tax dollars it's too bad that we can't get a lot of these people to move to the swing states and <laughs> <laughs> I, had somebody, I had somebody tell me the other day who supports Kamala and everything going on when I said, you know, about the Venezuelan, you know, gangs and this and that, you know, this crime wave going on. And mm -hmm. people have been, you know, brutally harmed and, 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 and their lives ended because of these people and mass robberies of jewelry stores and all kinds that just go in. They don't even care about their faces. They just go in, pistol whip everybody, take what they want. And then the response was so juvenile. Well, you know, you're just saying that there's plenty more, you know, rapes and murders committed by citizens than there are ever committed by them. You're missing the point. They're not supposed to be here to begin with. Right. It's true. Those lives would have been saved had the right. law been enforced by this lousy president and vice president. Do you not understand? We're not talking about they're here legally and screwed up. Okay, and then you're comparing apples and oranges. You compare right. apples, that, that, apples. This is apples. illegals. All illegals this should be here. Different category. We're talking about the illegals doing this. A they should absolutely. have never walked through this place to begin with. They have these twisted arguments that make no sense, and they try to make them make sense. And when you point out that what you're saying makes no sense, we're talking about they should have been here to be able to do that. So, uh, how do we solve the problem with <laughs> Venezuela? We'll start with Venezuela first. Is you have to remove Nicolas Maduro. He is a dictator. He's a strong man. He stole the election from, from Edmundo Gonzalez, who in all accounts, all tallies, won the election. He stole the election. He's this is not the first time he's done that. He's done that numerous times already. But this is the clearest one that people have fed up with him. 
And now recently, the U.S. finally something, I think through HSI and other agencies, seized his narco plane that he had in Dominican Republic. What's all, H- all this H- that he's proven. What's, what's HSI? What is that? Uh, Homeland Security Investigators are okay. under DHS. Okay. They used to be customs, customs investigators. I, I used to work for customs. And then uh, after 9-11, they went under DHS. It used to be Treasury. So a lot of changes after line line. But narco, his narco plane, okay, $13 million. He had a shell company in Miami, illegally purchased. They illegally took it out. And he used it for his personal use all the time throughout. But if you haven't seen I think I talked about one of the shows. Go check out this movie on Netflix, Bill. Hopefully you can see it. It's in Spanish. Simon. Watch it, Simon. And it's about the, the, the oppression the students have gone who, who stood up. The poor students of Venezuela who try to stand up for the country, try to bring back, and what he used, he militarizes, he weaponizes the military, the police, <clears throat> to destroy these kids, destroy their lives, and what's happened there, trying to bring freedom to uh, Venezuela. It's awful what's happening there. But you know what? If we had a real good administration, they already have him indicted. He's a narco terrorist. He's another Noriega. Hopefully, if Trump wins, they put in a plan together. They will go and arrest him, like in Panama. Put him near El Chapo and have him have his trial there. And he can sit there in uh, in uh, in the supermax there in Florence, Colorado, next to El Chapo Guzman, El Mayo, and all the narco uh, drug traffickers. I remember Noriega hid out in the Catholic uh, embassy or something, yes. Vatican embassy, Vatican, the Vatican almost, embassy. almost a year. Um, yeah. And w- what the special ops would do is play a glaring like heavy metal music twenty four seven because they couldn't go in there, but they could. They could do psychological operations on them. Yeah. And so eventually I guess he came out, but <clears throat> with with uh the guy Maduro. in Maduro, doesn't he have a much stronger military? But also I've seen in demonstrations where the cops took off their clothes and said, We support the people, we're done with this. Yeah, I know a lot. I, I think he, he because he he's he's not a true communist anymore, right? What what he is now, he's not for the people, he's for himself. He's fleecing his own country, his cronies. Have pretty much depreciated. Remember, Venezuela, being a uh, OPEC nation, was one of the richest countries in the world in the early '80s, top ten, richer than most European nations. Remember if that. You see, if you see a Sitco gas station, that's owned by. Uh, yeah, the, the, so just just remember that it, it was one of the richest countries in the world, and and then within ten years that he's been in power, and of course Chavez's policies, little by little, but this guy became a, a, a narco trafficker. He, he pretty much destroyed the country. So. Uh, and, and he and he weaponizes the military and he weaponizes law enforcement. He, now he's trying. Oh, there's something new that just happened. Also, he's now had indicted his rival, opposition rival, this guy Toy Gonzalez, Mundo Gonzalez, uh, for terrorism charges. Give me a break. The guy has a right freedom of speech. Speak. Oh, you got. Oh, you're a terrorist if you say anything bad about me. No, you're a criminal. You need to be in in the United States being tried for being a. Uh, a, a narco trafficker. That's, that's a banana republic like they're trying to do here. The Bidens and the Justice Department going after Trump for constantly enhancing or fabricating things. I mean, it, it's obviously one political prosecution after another, and they just continue doing I, it. Like, like I said in my article, will, no, will Maduro be another Noriega or another Fidel Castro? Will he be protected by the Russian umbrella because he's trying to get more Putin involved in Venezuelan affairs? Or will he go down like Noriega? That's what history will show. Then the next five years or less, Bill, one way or the other will determine which way Maduro goes. Yeah. Ruto Maduro. That's what he is. He's stu- stubborn headed. He- he's an idiot. And uh, people, the, the, the masses have had it with <clears throat> Maduro. They want their lives back. You know, 96% of the people in Venezuela live beyond, uh, below the poverty line. Just think about that. What happened to Venezuela? Just, just like in Cuba. Cuba was a First-rate country, right? And the '40s and '50s has its own constitution, but with Castro's communist communism, destroyed the island. Maduro has done work, but Maduro's worse than that communist. He he lives really good. He, he's a narco terrorist. Right. Awful, awful. A lot of these leaders are given the opportunity: leave, take your money and your security team, and you know, go to Spain, go to France, go here, go there, live in exile. Nobody will pick you up or prosecute you. But they want to hold on to the last second until they're drug out and put in prison somewhere forever. Hopefully, I, I hate to see the golden parachute. I'm hoping that uh, there's a coup and uh, Maduro, just like Mussolini or others, gets drugged down through the streets like he deserved because he's killed countless of people, ordered their execution. Now, for the algorithm, this show is for news value, uh, educational value, and 
we're expressing our opinions. We don't right. condone violence. We, but we do see that the people in certain situations do need to take 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 a stand and be part of their own solution. They they need to be they need to have a freedom. They have the democracy, their rights, and they don't have any of that. But go look at Simone. It's a great show. It's a great movie on Netflix. It's in Spanish, but it's, it's subtitled. You can look at it. Very powerful, very emotional. It, it'll really speak to you and, and take a look at it. Yep, continue, continue with politics here. Um, Liz Cheney. I cannot believe Liz Cheney, the daughter of Dick Cheney, former vice president of this country from 2000, 2008, who at the time was considered, he was a secretary of defense under Bush Sr., was considered the most conservative man in, in the Republican Party. Now Trump has discarded him as as, as nothing, and um, they had the battle. Liz Cheney did vote for his impeachment, right, uh, after the storming of the Capitol building. And uh, he had his hit list there, and uh, she turned on him, and uh, now she endorses uh, Kamala Harris. Yep. Can't believe that. That's that's a, that's, a, that's a, But you know what? But guess what? We Tulsi Gabbard was a Democrat. RFK Jr., who were Democrats, endorsed Trump. So people come back and forth. They go left and right. So that's how it is. Kennedy, Kennedy royalty, because they kicked him to the curb and just abused the hell out of him. He's now supporting Trump. Incredible. I mean, that's a great story. Stuff up. I, I, I don't know what, what the stories we have to roll into, but I, I do want to do a few updates also. Sure. Um, so, you know, um, we had a book signing down here in the, in the uh, movie premiere. Mafia Monday co-host, former organized crime detective Louis Ballesteri, had joined us here in Florida. We had a great time. He's made some phenomenal connections. I introduced him to a few people. Peter Tickton, Donald Trump's attorney. Peter, the attorney you want between you and your problems. They went to New York Military Academy together. We're supposed to be meeting here in the next few days, hopefully for an in-person interview. Yeah, we did a good interview before. That was good. Yep. And now Mary and I are going to be still working on wrongful conviction cases on Lawful Convictions Wednesdays. And for those of you who love my show, there's more to come. I can't talk about it, but uh, let's just say stay tuned. So season two just ended of Inmate to Roommate. And uh, thank you for all the outpouring of love and support. We talked about issues of recidivism and how housing and inadequate housing upon release from prison is one of the leading factors in recidivism. And so... It's not just addiction or alcoholism that leads people. It's finding a stable place to, to live when you get out because you're a felon. It's hard to get in places. Yeah, no, um, and then, you know, financially, you know, you're behind the curve. I'm 18 years behind the curve. And then my sisters contributed that by stealing my inheritance. Mm -hmm. So I say that publicly because I have the proof. But anyway, things uh, went uh, against me because uh, I couldn't present the evidence to show exactly what happened because I was incarcerated and nobody cared to get involved. So I took an 800 grand hit on that before my release. So these are real issues. Now the reality show delves into a lot of things, the struggle of getting on your feet, living with people that are not your family. Uh, hmm. Everybody knows Mark it. it's, it's a good show. Yeah, it's, it's a good show. Mark and Sharna were quite the interesting couple. I was living with a pen pal, but you have to see it. It became the second highest rated show in the country. And I've written a few books. We talk about the serial killers. This is Robert Durst, uh, Sex and the Serial Killer. Thank you for everybody. Um, I'm going to start. I learned how to start pinning these things to the comments, the books. So I'm going to start doing that a little more effectively. And once you get to a certain amount of followers, so so please you know, subscribe, follow. You can do even more with the merchandise store and all that stuff. But there's all yeah. these little tricks and nuances I'm starting to pick up on. Oh, yeah. Here. Oh, yeah. And but Ignacio, the, and Ignacio turned me on to Medium, so I'm trying to figure that out. Medium and Rumble, right? And, and with Rumble, we uh, Rumble, we we've had uh, some of the biggest views. So our first show we ever did, almost two years ago, Bill, has over ten thousand views on Rumble. So go check that one. We have a ton of shows on Rumble too, and, and shows do well on YouTube, but they do better on Rumble. And if we get more on other other platforms, I think it just keeps on growing. Spotify would be nice too. You know, this just keeps on growing and growing and growing and growing. Uh, so yeah, check out Medium. Medium is a great platform. If you love to write, go to Medium. Start writing. You don't have to become a member of Medium. You can write all you want, and you can provide your books out there or your articles. It's a good way also to promote your other work you have going on. I like Medium. Over a hundred million users. If you want to find a, a very insightful articles by Ignacio, go to Ignacio J Estevan on 
Esteban, see the spelling of his name up there on the screen, um, on Medium, and you'll find a string of his articles. I think he said he did 60 so far. Just 60. The last I have two up there. My, my first one was doing well, and then it disappeared when I uploaded the second one. So, again, you're incarcerated. They don't care that you don't understand technology when you get out. So I'm no. having a hell of a time trying to figure these things out. But I'm going to start publishing routine articles on Medium as well. That'd be great. That'd be great, Bill. Medium.com. Medium.com. And we'll, we'll put the links on. I'll say the link again. We'll put the links on in, 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 on the show so people can look at it. I put it everywhere. You can find You can also follow me on Facebook. Be more hobby. Ignacio. So follow me on Facebook also. LinkedIn. Follow me on LinkedIn also. Plenty of places you can follow me and go to Amazon. And you can follow me on Amazon. Well, oh, my Amazon author page. Plenty of place to follow me and a lot of good content. I put content, Bill knows it, every day. Right, Bill? I've got new stuff, original stuff every day. People are looking at it. Enjoy it. People love it. Uh, take a look at it. So, And like always, no Buckies, Bill. No Buckies in Stafford, Virginia. We say no to Buckies. And, and I had a, had a fun time um, with this uh, little short I did yesterday. I think Bill just saw it where I go where I was singing. Kamala, 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 not. Yeah, you, you, that, that was pretty interesting. You know, I'm helping, a, <laughs> I'm helping a friend of mine, Roger Homefield. So go to the Joe Citizen Show. So I know you did a panel with him and there was some guests. That yeah, 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 yeah. But Roger happens to be a really, really good guy. He's a pretty famous musician. And he came up with a jingle that he wants played at all the Trump rallies. Because Kamala Harris cannot have an intelligent conversation. She doesn't talk about policy failures. Does not. So his jingle is policy, 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 policy. So we put that on all his videos, and we, we hope that gets uh, – People get a little into that, yeah. Well, hey, we'll talk about next week with a debate. Remember, next week's a debate. Trump and Harris. ABC, we're going to check it out. I'm, I, every, the, uh, the world's going to be watching, Bill. The world be watching. Are they going to mute the mic buttons? Yes, they agree to that. Well, then all, all of her screw I, I don't know if that's good or not because all of her screw ups can't be heard then yeah and, and trump screw ups either so that's good it goes both ways trump's had some doozies too so i think just address that when it has to and and that's it remember it, it, and hopefully doesn't talk about talked about policy and not about her race or whatever because people don't don't like that just stick to the policy i think the difference between his doozies and hers Hers are just wacky incompetence and word salad meaningless yeah, all word salads and lies that's her issues. His might be saying things in the wrong way, like being a little bit inappropriate that makes you raise your eyebrow. Like, really? Why would you say it that way? You know you're going to offend somebody, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. he's basically out there trying to do the right thing. He doesn't have to be doing this. He's a billionaire. I mean, look where his motivation is. He didn't even take a paycheck as president. So yeah, That's right. He gave it up. That's good. All right, Bill. Sounds good, man. we got a lot of stuff going on. That was a good one. All right. Thanks for joining us again, Ignacio. Check out Steel Spotlight. If you need public relations, we are definitely rolling faster into that realm. Also, press releases. You have a business. And shout out to Palm Bleach. Palm Bleach is like the new vanilla ice. Um, I'm invited to a celebrity to an event where there's going to be other celebrities there. And to Mag Chop Kenny, another event, the Cafe Luna. So that's coming up. We're going to put some heavy advertising out for that. Um, these are basically meet and greets, networking, and people that we're making either films or, or other things with. Um, Thank you for joining. Thank you. All right. Not soon.